Hi, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to episode two of Let's Talk ETC. I'm your host, Carlo V, along with my co-host, Dr. Christian Severino. Also, I want to make a special point tonight and thank the ETC developers for working on this project. Uh, Christian and I, you know, we're in touch with the community an awful lot, but it's really the devs that are kind of the engine, the oil, the tires, you know, everything that drives this project forward in such an exciting way and into such exciting times. Uh, so I just wanted to make a special point about thanking them for everything they do. And uh, also, that kind of segues us into uh, the next topic for tonight. We have a special guest with us, ETC developer Elaine. Elaine, uh, why don't you just introduce yourself to everybody and also thanks so much for everything you've done with for the ETC community and the ETC project. Sure. Um, hi. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, I'm you know excited to be here and I'm glad to see so much support for ETC. Um, I mean, you, you give the devs a lot of credit, but I think really it's the community and the people who build apps for um, ETC that will, you know, actually give it value. Yeah, very true, very true. Um, so uh, let's let's also, I'd like to thank the ETC community um, along with all the developers and, you know, everyone that's participating in this project, um, you know, that's across the globe. There's just so much support. Um, and I guess we can, uh, you know, talk a little bit about uh, ETC newsletter that was just released and uh, talk about some of the stuff in the development report on there. It's, you know, great to have uh, one of you guys on so that we can get into a little bit more depth of what's going on. Uh, sure, should I go? Yeah, yeah, I guess um, I know we were talking earlier, you were telling uh, me and Christian about, uh, you know, some of the stuff going on in the dev report, like uh, parity and F-Core and stuff like that. Yeah, so previously we had updated uh, the Go Ethereum uh, client uh, to delay the bomb, and um, uh, now Parity had, or I mean, uh, the Ethcore team has accepted um, our the, the same changes for uh, the Parity client. And uh, right now, Parity is the most um, popular client in e for ETC. So uh, by uh, our January hard fork, everyone should have the updated client with the de uh, bomb delay. And um, it, it's great that um, Ethcore has been so supportive of our changes and willing to accommodate us. Um, and I mean, for that matter, you know, the rest of uh, the Ethereum developers have also provided a lot of uh, technical support in um, helping us uh, get everything stabilized. Cool, cool. And uh, can yeah, I say also, something? Yeah, yeah, definitely, Christian, go ahead. Okay, well, first of all, I, I didn't know uh, what Elaine just said. I'm very glad that she's getting support from the Ethereum developers. And uh, But I did have one question that might help some people listening. So I was reading about in the dev report and in um, this link, this paper that is uh, is in the dev report called Ethereum Classic Fundamentals. And if you read this and you read what the developers are doing, I could imagine some people thinking, holy moly, if I'm not a genius, I can't contribute. And I, you guys picked up the, uh, the, the, the clients midstream and, and uh, you guys are now you know, working on them. You removed the, the DAO uh, issues. And I was just wondering, uh, what would you say to somebody that maybe is not, uh, uh, you know, the greatest developer in the world, but they want to contribute. Do you have to be a genius to help you guys? Well, of course not. I mean, I, I don't think um, any of the uh, current uh, ETC developers were familiar with um, Rust, which is the programming language used for parity uh, prior to diving in. And um, Splix, well, Igor has uh, done a great job with that. Uh, but the, the community is really supportive and um, the, the client code bases are, I mean, pretty big. They've been working on it for like two years now. Uh, so it's impossible to expect anyone to jump in and instantly be familiar with it, everything. Um, so yeah, the, the community is supportive and um, it, it's easy to get help and get questions answered. Okay, great. I know that 
I've heard here and there that, like for example, to in contrast the the Linux kernel development, those guys have been using C forever, and I heard that if you ask a dumb question on the kernel list, that they pretty much chew you up. But it uh, sounds like what you're saying is the etc devs, the you guys aren't like that, so it, more welcoming. Is that right? Yeah, I don't have much. I mean, I don't have any any experience um, contributing to the Linux kernel, but um, I mean, I've I've heard mixed stories about that. Um, but regardless, over here, yeah, everyone is you know very patient and will answer dumb questions. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I've definitely had uh, my fair share of those kind of being uh, in the in the non-tech side of these things. But um, you know, everybody, even from from day one, has just been so supportive throughout the whole community. And you know, I always post a like a community poll to just to see how everybody's communicating and getting along and stuff like that. And uh, it seems like uh, everything is is doing really well so far, which is great. Um, and also. I guess this kind of can bring us into our next topic as far as uh, community support and stuff like that. Um, you know, big, big uh, semi-announcement, nothing official, but from the CEO of BTCC, uh, originally it started out as that Cointelegraph article, which was kind of just like a little bit of a rumor mill, but then he came out and confirmed on Twitter, I don't know if you guys saw this, uh, he said a quote, uh, it's something we plan to do, no time frame yet. And uh, to the Twitter sphere is going nuts with that one. It's it's pretty awesome. What do you guys think, uh, Lane? I guess you can uh, give us give us your thoughts on that. Um, yeah, when I went to Shanghai uh, two months ago, I was surprised at um, like how big uh, the community support was over in China because I hadn't really been um, in touch with that part of the community at all. Um, but it seems like there's a lot more support for ETC over there than um, here in the States. And um, it, it's great to hear that uh, BTCC will be supporting um, Ethereum Classic. And I hear uh, not um, the other one. Uh, which one? I'm sorry. Um, I, I think they're only going to support one. Yeah, yeah, that's um, it, that's what it looks like right now. Um, I, I the WeChat is kind of still buzzing about what's going on with that. Um, uh, for you guys listening out there who don't know what I meant by that, um, we kind of have a lot of our discussions uh, amongst the North American and European counterparts take place, you know, on Slack and Reddit and stuff like that. But a lot of the Asian community, um, they really communicate a lot through the WeChat. Um, group that's on for Ethereum Classic. Uh, so what, what do you think, Christian? I, I mean, I know um, you've probably been in touch with some people about this and you've gotten a lot of community response about education. Um, it's pretty cool how how much the Asian community is into what, what we've got going on, right? Yeah. I, in fact, I was contacted by somebody that wanted to translate some of my educational materials, which uh, and that I wasn't expecting that. And uh, he, said, cool stuff. he even showed me some Chinese web page, which of course I couldn't read, but he said, oh yeah, you got all these people reading your stuff on this website. So I thought, oh, I'll have to take your word for it because I have no clue what it says and, and how to find <laughs> out. Um, so that was pretty cool. I, I had a question for Elaine. I don't know if you could answer this, but you said that the Asian community uh, has more, is supporting ETC more. Do you have any idea why that is the case? Is there some cultural reason that makes them more attracted to ETC or is it something else? Um, well, I, I, I don't know if they're necessarily supporting ETC more, you know, versus like other uh, chains like Ethereum. Um, I, I think that their support is, um, just greater uh, relative to what we might see over here um, in North America. And I mean, it's possible that there are just um, more people using digital currency over there or more um, people interested in digital currency over there. Okay. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, digital currency or cryptocurrency blockchains in general just have kind of a different value proposition over there. Um, they're, they're pretty seems like they're pretty hyped about the possible uh, how heavily 
the community is leading, leaning towards a uh, cap regard in regards to the monetary policy. Uh, what else, um, what else can you tell us about your trip? I know you had a couple of meetups over there and you were kind of, you, I think you went to DevCon and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. Yeah. I didn't actually go to DevCon. Um, I only went for the um, ETC meetup. That's right. Right. And um, what was uh, what was that meetup like? I know we tried to stream it, but the stream dropped because there were too many people trying to watch. There was like 3,500 people um, trying to watch the stream at the time. Um, it, it went well. I, I met uh, Roy, who is, um, I guess, leading the uh, Chinese-speaking community over there for uh, ETC. Um, I got to learn a bit about uh, like BTCC and how they make decisions about uh, what... Um, uh, I guess coins to list on their exchanges, and I'm I'm guessing that one of the main concerns that they have right now regarding uh, ETC or Ethereum, um, both, is that the clients are still or the blockchains are still a little bit unstable and um, subject to multiple forks. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I'm I'm glad we're taking kind of a security first approach to, to things as opposed to um, move, move fast, break things, which is a little bit of a different mantra. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad we're, we're taking that approach. Um, Christian, I want to ask you also about just uh, along those lines with the, the unstableness of the chains potentially and what we're doing going forward with security first and kind of how that plays into um, the, the Asian community, international community, and North American, South American, European communities going forward for ETC. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I can I can feel their pain, uh, as a famous politician said. I, I nobody likes hard forks, and so if, if there's people in the Asian community that aren't too happy about that, but um, it's really you know I'm sure Elaine would agree that you just there's nothing you could do about certain right some sometimes you have to hard fork the uh, denial of service vulnerabilities we have to hard fork there's just no way around that um, the way this will all play out hopefully is that we will get most of the uh, hard forks out of the way now and then going forward they'll uh, they'll be less and less it may be eventually you know one every couple years if that and uh, that's just the nature of software I'm hoping that that's how it turns out. That's what I'm assuming is going to happen. That's true. I think even the way the last hard fork went that we did that was for a protocol update was really, really smooth. Uh, so as long as we continue to update the code base and do protocol forks or protocol updates, really they are since um, I think fork kind of implies that it's contentious, but this one wasn't contentious at all because no one stayed on the vulnerable chain since it was a protocol update. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I, I think as long as going forward we stick to purely protocol updates, uh, we really won't have too many issues as far as uh, contention and, and discussion, or not discussion, but uh, stuff like that goes. It won't, it won't be like the, the DAO debacle or anything like that. What, what do you think, Elaine? Well, I mean, Bitcoin is facing a protocol update right now regarding the block size, and um, I mean, we're we're lucky right now in that uh, our community is still fairly small, and um, we are all fairly aligned in our goals. I think as um, as the community gets bigger, there might be more contention over protocol updates because people will uh, have different priorities for um, what. ETC should be good at. Um, so yeah, my, my preference is to get all the protocol updates and hard forks out of the way early on and just have something stable for longer term. Yeah, very true, very true. Um, so I, I think that's a uh, you know, pretty, pretty good discussion that we had about the BTC and the CEO and uh, the Cointelegraph article, I guess, is kind of encompassed on that. Um, uh, I, don't know. I had to make a comment. Yeah, so, go ahead. Okay, so there's there's it, it, there's at least two reasons why a hard fork could be uh, a, a bad thing. So one of them is definitely if there's huge disagreements in the community. But um, 
it, you didn't quite, it didn't seem like you, you saw that even some people, uh, change is annoying. Uh, even if there's, there's complete agreement, you have to update your clients. You have to do a lot. And some people would just rather not have to deal with any of that. So even if ever, there's agreement, people still don't necessarily say, oh, okay, hard fork as much as you want. So that's true. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm glad really that. Good especially for exchanges who, you know, have to, who are securing like a huge amount of ether or ETC and um, have to be able to update securely. Yeah, very true. Um, I got a chance to speak to uh, some of the people from exchanges over at Coin Agenda, and they expressed uh, a lot of that same sentiment about not necessarily whether it's contentious or not contentious, it's just a pain in the neck for them altogether whether mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter whether it was all agreed upon or not so that's that's very true very true um so also there was also uh another thing from the, the recent newsletter it was an article from rocky uh from uh, by rocky from crypto hustle i don't know if you got a ch chance to see that christian or what was going on with that article oh um, yes just for anybody out there who didn't get a chance to read um christian can tell you guys about it you guys should definitely check it out it's in the newsletter which we will post a link to the newsletter in the description. If you're, if you're watching on YouTube in the description below, we'll have a link to the, the newsletter. Yeah. So um, uh, in summary, uh, a Rocky who uh, describes himself as a full-time cryptocurrency trader, investor, and analyst. So he said, okay, I better check out ETC, see if it's something I want to park some money in. And he, apparently is bullish on ETC and he he wrote a paper describing why he thinks there's happy times ahead and he goes into detail. He must have really done his homework because he knows a lot of names of the developers. Uh, there's a lot of facts and figures in here. Um, uh, so the developers have their act together and then he talks about Barry Silbert has a investment trust and they're they're working on the monetary policy and uh, anyway, so he just makes his case why he's a fan of ETC as an investor. Yeah, I'm not sure if you got a chance to uh, check that check out that article. Did you, uh, uh, Elaine? I know you're busy uh, doing a whole bunch of a million things, so I'm not sure if you got a chance to check that out. Uh, I read it pretty quickly, and I thought like most or pretty much everything was fairly accurate. And um, uh, yeah, I. I, I mean, I agree with everything that he said regarding, you know, how Ethereum Classic formed and its fundamentals. Yeah, yeah. Rocky's been, uh, he's already put out a, a couple of articles for, for in relative to ETC and talking about the community. So uh, shout out to Rocky for representing ETC, um, um, especially when there's so many hit pieces that have come out against us from a couple of different, uh, different news sources. So. Uh, I'm happy for Rocky and Crypto Hustle to be able to get the, the facts out there about what the ETC community and the ETC development community is, has been doing and working on the project. Uh, so, oh, I had a comment. So one, go ahead. Yeah. One, one thing I got from Rocky's paper, uh, this is part of one of the reasons why I asked Elaine if you had to be a, a genius to, to support the community. He really, he, he just goes on and on about how great the developers are and you read about uh, Igor Artemonov, and uh, you'd think that this guy was just a, you know, a, a tank development machine because it just he goes yeah. he has a paragraph about how he just really took over a lot of responsibilities, leading a lot of work, and you're just like, holy moly, man, these guys are amazing. So. Definitely, um, it's for anyone listening that has seen the username Splix out there. Uh, Splix, that would be Igor. Um, for anyone out there listening that's interested, kind of wants to put the username with the actual name. Uh, so I, I know you've done a bunch of work probably with Igor and uh, stuff like that, Elaine. So uh, what do you, what's the dynamic between you guys like? I don't know if it's something you guys work together or it's kind of just like an independent thing going on. Well, uh, first of all, Igor is legitimately... A tank and a coding machine, like yeah, yeah. Um, all that. <laughs> um, but up 
to this point, um, like most uh, development work has been done sort of independently with uh, a little bit of uh, communication uh, on GitHub when we uh, open issues or um, do pull requests. And uh, the conversation on GitHub is open to the public. So like, even if uh, someone from the community doesn't actually want to like dive into the code, they, they can still monitor like what the issues are and what changes are being made and I'm, they're welcome to comment on them. So uh, yeah, what we've been doing so far has been you know, fairly unstructured. Got you, got you. Um, absolutely, in reference to the, the participation. So in the newsletter, guys, that's in the description if you're watching this on YouTube, there's uh, gonna be a link to a call to action post from our Reddit that has all the information about um, how you can join and participate on GitHub and stuff like that. So. Uh, you know, we've discussed a lot about ETC, um, and something that our, our viewers are interested in is, uh, as, as much as I, we like to talk about ETC and what's going on in the community, uh, we are all major proponents of, of blockchain and blockchain in general and what's going on. So uh, I guess the recent hype has been recently about all, all this Zcash stuff. So uh, not that any of us here know a whole bunch of what's going on with that, but just a couple of opinions on what's going on with Zcash and the, the whole launch of that. If you guys have any opinions on it, what's going on? Uh, just a couple of brief thoughts. If you yeah, so, have. so, so um, I was uh, in the process of researching this, so it's timely that you asked. So um, there's been some new uh, advances in cryptography that can provide uh, uh, privacy, uh, the, the help with, with privacy concerns. And so uh, Zuko, has uh, he's leading this Zcash project. I remember uh, there was some other project unrelated. I remember talking to him years and years ago uh, on another peer-to-peer -peer, uh, community. And uh, so he's just taken the lead on this. But uh, yeah, I'm just uh, excited to see how this whole zero knowledge proof business plays out. If it pr gives everybody uh, you know, the privacy that, that Zuko claims it does. I think that would be great. What do you think, Elaine? Um, yeah, I think, um, I mean, the technology behind Zcash and uh, ZK Snarks um, has the potential to be very interesting. And I know that uh, Bitcoin is currently looking at ways to uh, better preserve the privacy of their transactions. And it's probably something that ETC might even want to consider in the future. Um, I mean, this might not be the most scalable solution, but I mean, it's something we should think about. And I think Zcash got a lot of unnecessary um, grief because of the way they set up their, you know, for-profit corporation and got venture funding. Um, and I think that distracts a lot from the actual technology behind Zcash because, I mean, it, it has, I mean, it's very interesting. Um, probably fewer than a dozen people on the planet actually know how um, ZK Snarks work. So uh, it would be great if people um, paid more attention to uh, I mean, the actual protocol uh, instead of how they set up their corporation. Agree. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, absolutely understand what you're saying and stuff like that. And there was a lot of discussion about this on the Slack and People were actually even discussing, I don't know if you saw it, uh, Ether Ninja and a couple of other people were discussing about like Monero and Relay between that and ETC and a whole bunch of other stuff. Not sure if you got a chance to see that, Elaine. Oh, I actually did. Yeah, yeah, you should um, check that out. It was a pretty interesting conversation. Uh, didn't get to go too in-depth into it, but I know a lot of people were, or not a lot of people, but a few people were discussing about Monero and between us and Monero and Zcash and BTC, all sorts of stuff like that. And uh, Christian, actually, did you get a chance to, to see that conversation that was going on in Slack? No, I did see that specific conversation that you're talking about, but I did have another comment about this, this move towards uh, initiatives regarding privacy. It, it just seems like the, the, the inevitable or natural progression. First, Satoshi, uh, showed that blockchains work 
And then, uh, right, Vitalik said, okay, let's make a, an even more powerful scripting language. And then uh, that seems to be working. So then people look around and say, okay, what else can I do now? Okay, let's add privacy. It's so it just seems like the inevitable progression of cryptocurrency to, to now add this, this new feature on top of what we've already established. Definitely. It's definitely evolving. That's for sure. Uh, it feels like, um, you know, every, every year that goes by these, these chains evolve the way that like an organism does. Um, so I, I, I've read a few articles that kind of talk about that and I kind of agree. It's such an interesting thing to look at the way, that these chains, you know, break and change and evolve, and all these ideas are constantly progressing at such a, a rapid rate. Yeah, maybe yeah. If, if somebody has a different viewpoint, maybe they could add a comment. Um, but if given a choice between, you know, having privacy or not having privacy, it would seem to me that in the future, people say, oh, I'll just have privacy just to be safe. And so it would seem that pretty much, you know, Pri uh, privacy protecting cryptocurrencies are going to dominate in the future. I don't see why that wouldn't be the case. Very true. Very true. And I guess like Elaine said, um, in reference to the ZK snarks, what'd you say, Elaine, there's probably like less than two dozen or a dozen people that really get what's going on with ZK snarks and how that technology works. Yeah, there was a quote uh, from, I mean, it's posted on YouTube somewhere um, where um, Zuko was at a meetup and someone asked him to explain how um, zero knowledge proofs work. And he said uh, something to the uh, effect of, you know, to be honest, I don't actually really know how they work. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that, that's reassuring. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there are probably aren't enough people out there who understand how it works, but it was the same case with, you know, blockchain in general. When right. it first, yeah. 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 When it first came out and like, no one understood it, but eventually a, a lot of people understood it. Agreed. Agreed. I, I know exactly what you mean. It's kind of just the, the natural progression of technology. Um, even yeah. going past before blockchain, if you look at, you know, a standard computer, there is just a, very few, few people, I guess, initially that even understood what was going on or the implications. Um, so yeah, can, I, I think, can I make one more comment? Yeah, go ahead, definitely. And so uh, what Zuko is doing is not, of course, the only way to uh, provide privacy. Some of the other cryptocurrencies, they uh, a, a simplified method, uh, simplified description, they're basically mixing a lot of people's transactions together. And it all comes out fine at the end but the idea is to confuse everything in, in the middle so much that you can't trace it back. So uh, in an in a oversimplified nutshell, that's, that's another big way that people are trying to establish privacy in cryptocurrencies. Definitely, definitely. I, I've, um, you know, I've read about the, the mixing and stuff like that and uh, the ring signatures uh, as well. I've read a little bit about, although I don't know too much about it. Um, so in, in reference to, uh, this is kind of a little bit of a derailment on what we've been talking about, but I, I wanted to bring it up because uh, it's an important thing for anybody that's listening out there and that wants to participate in something we have going on in the community. So I don't know if you guys saw this or maybe Elaine saw it or just Christian in reference to the uh, Wikipedia page that right now, uh, if you... Wikipedia Ethereum Classic, it redirects you to Ethereum currently. So uh, I don't know if you guys saw this, but inside the newsletter, I put a kind of a call to action to help with that Wikipedia page for anybody who wants to, to help out with uh, structuring that or adding information or citations. And I, I spoke with some of the guys over in Wikipedia in the chat, and they recommended what some other people were recommending, which was we need to add citations and add information inside the actual Ethereum page to the point where it's so comprehensive that then we'll kind of be promoted in a way to our own Ethereum classic page on Wikipedia. So I, I don't know if you saw that, Elaine? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I think, okay. I think that's a great idea. I mean, we could pretty much take like Rocky's whole article and just paste it in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was a that was a great article, and we've got a ton of other articles and a ton of other ton of other info too. So, uh, Christian, you, did you see that on on Reddit as well? Yes, I did. And my 
my thought, one, one uh, encouraging thing was that for anybody that wants to contribute, this is really like the, the, the ground floor. I mean, if, if people are putting up the, the first ETC uh, Wikipedia page, you know, clearly where this is the time to get in, um, the developers are, are getting, you know, organizing, getting the systems in place. And so in a couple of years, everybody, everything will be perfectly set and organized. Now that everything is kind of, there's churn, this is a great time to, to get in and help out. The Wikipedia page would be really great too. Um, uh, since you're also an educator, uh, Christian, as, yes. as an educational resource to just be able to, once we have it comprehensive enough, uh, to be able to just kind of point people in that direction mm -hmm. um, for a lot of different questions that they have about what's going on in the community or where we were, where we are currently, or where we're going. Uh, so uh, I'm pretty excited about getting that off the ground and getting a lot of contributions from uh, the general community and getting that together. So we that'll be another great educational resource for us to, to point people in. Yes. Yes. Very cool. So uh, I think that uh, pretty much covers it as far as uh, the newsletter goes. And um, guys, anybody listening out there that uh, if there's any questions you have or anything you'd like us to touch upon or talk about in the next podcast, let us know if you're watching on YouTube or listening on YouTube. Uh, leave it in the comments section below, and we'll definitely be able to bring that up in the next podcast. Uh, Lane, anything else you guys want to talk about or touch on? <laughs> okay, cool, cool. So, uh, again, I'd like to thank you guys for being on here with me. Christian, thanks again for uh, helping me out, co-hosting the show, and special thanks to you, Elaine. Uh, it's great to have a dev on here, and thank you to the – you know, entire Ethereum Classic community, the ETC community, and the development community that's been helping out with this project so much. So thank you guys for joining. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, looking forward to next week, which uh, same time, same place. We're going to be doing this show uh, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. We're going to try to have a guest on every week, as well as uh, hit some user questions for anybody who posts them in the comments below. Sounds good. All right, excellent, guys. Take care, Elaine. Thanks. Later, Christian. Take care. Bye, guys.